Alright guys, we've spent a lot of time working on naming compounds and writing formulas. I've got a few special ones that I want you to know about, and those are acids and hydrates. So in this set of slides, we're going to look at how to write them and name the formulas, and just how to recognize them in general. Now let's start with acids. Well, acids are compounds that generally are going to begin with a hydrogen atom. And I've given you some examples here. There are two types of acids. Binary acids are the simplest ones. Binary, you know, means two. So a binary acid is a hydrogen and then some nonmetal, like HCl or HBr, even H2S is a binary acid. Ternary acids or oxyacids are a hydrogen followed by a polyatomic ion. The reason they're called oxyacids is because a lot of times they do involve oxygen. In the examples that I've given you here, H2SO4 and HNO3, H3PO4, those are all ternary acids. They're hydrogen and then some polyatomic ion. You'll recognize those ions from your reference tables. So let's talk about how to name the binary acids. Well, before HCl would have been named hydrogen chloride, but with the acid nomenclature, you're going to put the prefix hydro in the front. You're going to put the root of the second element, so chlorine, and then ic acid on the end of it. So HCl is called hydrochloric acid. Now let's take a look at a few more examples. HBr, we're going to put hydro in the front. We're going to take the root of bromine and make it bromic acid, so hydrobromic acid. Put that ic acid on the end. Here's another one, HI, the prefix hydro in front, the root word for iodine, and then ic acid on the end, hydroiodic acid. H2S, now this has got the subscript 2, but it doesn't make a difference. The way that you name it is the same pattern. Hydro in the front, the root word for sulfur, and then ic acid on the end. And finally, H3N, hydro in the front, root word for nitrogen, and then ic acid on the end. All binary acids follow this pattern. Got it? All right, let's look at those oxy acids or the ternary acids. You need to recognize the polyatomic ion. Now, there's a little bit of a trick here. If the polyatomic ion ends in 8, like sulfate or phosphate, for example, you're going to replace it with ic at the end. And if the polyatomic ion ends in ite, like nitrite, then you're going to replace it with us. So we're going to take that root and just change the ending on it and then say acid. So if this example was given to you H2SO3, I would recognize it's an acid because hydrogen's at the front. SO3 is sulfite. Sulfite is going to become sulfurous. So this is sulfurous acid. And it's all based on that polyatomic ion. Here are a couple of other examples. HNO2, I know it's an acid because of the hydrogen. NO2 is nitrite, so I'm going to make that nitrous acid. I becomes OUS, remember at the end. Here's another one, HClO4. ClO4 is the perchlorate ion. 8 as a polyatomic ion ending becomes ic, so this is perchloric acid. And then H3PO4, I recognize PO4 as phosphate, so phosphate, A-T-E, is going to become ic, that'll be phosphoric acid. And the oxy acids all follow that set of rules. Now, to write the formulas from the name of an acid, you have to decide um, about that polyatomic ion. So if the acid starts with hydro, then you know it doesn't have a polyatomic ion in it. If it starts with hydro, it's a binary acid. But if there's no hydro, you have to remember those endings. Polyatomic ions that end in ATE are ic acids, and then polyatomic ions that are ites are us acids, or O-U-S. So remember, you could remember a little mnemonic, I ate something icky the eights become ic acids. Now, um, if there's a prefix like the hypochlorite ion or the perchlorate ion, then you're just going to name it using the same rules. Keep the prefix in the polyatomic ion though. Hypochlorous acid is formed from hypochlorite, for example. 
and then you just use your charges with your positive hydrogen uh, plus one charge and then the charge of the polyatomic ion that's negative do the crisscross to get your formula let's look at some examples All right, this first one if you were given carbonic acid I don't see hydro so I think it's going to be formed from a polyatomic ion and because it's ic acid I know it comes from carbonate carbonate is CO3 with a negative 2 charge so the formula for carbonic acid is H2CO3 nitrous acid OUS means ITE for the polyatomic ion so this comes from nitrite and I look up nitrite in your reference packet and it's NO2 with a negative 1 charge so when I crisscross the hydrogen plus 1 and the NO2 negative 1 I get the formula for nitrous acid to be HNO2 here's another one sulfuric acid sulfuric I see that IC ending so that means it comes from sulfate sulfate is SO4 with a negative 2 charge so when I crisscross those I get H2SO4 now you might think that one could be reduced but see the sulfur in the middle there's only one of those so you can't reduce it at all here's another one this one's got a prefix hydrochloric acid so I know because I see hydro this is not a polyatomic ion acid it's a binary acid so hydrochloric acid is made from hydrogen and chlorine you get HCl here's chlorous acid now chlorous acid because it ends in OUS must come from chlorite and chlorite is ClO2 with a negative one charge crisscross those and you get the formula you see there next one acetic acid this is a very common acid it's the acid in your kitchen that's found in vinegar so acetic acid I see that ick no hydro prefix it must come from the acetate polyatomic ion and so I've crisscrossed hydrogen plus one and acetate minus one it gives you kind of an unusual formula but that hydrogen in the front is what makes it an acid hydrosulfuric acid is the next example I see the prefix hydro hydro means it's a binary acid so it's hydrogen and sulfur hydrogen is a plus one but sulfur is a minus two so when you crisscross that you get H2S and that's hydrosulfuric acid alright last one phosphoric acid I see the ic acid on the end so I know it comes from a polyatomic ion that ends in ATE so phosphate which is PO4 with a negative 3 charge and I crisscross those giving me H3PO4 so those are just a few examples I hope you're starting to pick up on the pattern we'll practice more next time we're together now let's look at hydrates well the word hydrate should make you think of hydration maybe even water a hydrate is a compound that has some water molecules attached to it they're embedded in the crystal structure of the compound but they're actually separate from the compound itself so the example that I've given you here calcium acetate heptahydrate is the following formula you see the calcium acetate I've gotten that from calcium and acetate ions and I just crisscross them the dot with the waters is from the heptahydrate the prefix hepta means seven and hydrate refers to the water the dot that's there just refers to the fact that those seven waters are attached to that calcium acetate so that's the formula of a hydrate they're pretty easy to recognize because of the dot and the waters now what if all that water evaporated well then you'd be left with just calcium acetate in its anhydrous form anhydrous is without water and so the formula would just be calcium acetate now there are two different substances they come in different bottles they even look different take a look at this this one cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate is this really cool pink colored compound it's got um, hexahydrate which means six waters attached to it but if you evaporate all that water and you have anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride it's this really pretty blue colored compound anhydrous cobalt chloride does not have the water in it 
Because of the differences in the colors of these compounds, it's often used as an, um, like a detector for water in different products. Now while the waters are there and they change the physical properties of this compound, they do not change the chemical reactivity of cobalt chloride. So the waters only affect the physical properties. How do you write the formula for a hydrate from its name? Well first of all identify the ions that are involved and then you do the charge and crisscross method that we've already learned. We've just got to look at that hydrate part of the name to be able to figure out how many waters to add to the end with that dot. So take a look at these examples. The first one is magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. So I know magnesium is a plus two ion. I know sulfate's a negative two, so I crisscross those to get MgSO4. The twos reduce away. And then heptahydrate means seven waters. So the final formula there is MgSO4 with a dot 7H2O. All right, one more. Cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate. This was the one that we looked at on the last slide. Cobalt is a plus 2 because of that Roman numeral stock system. Chloride is a negative 1 ion. So when you crisscross those, you get COCl2. And then hexa is the prefix that means 6. And hydrate is the water. So dot 6H2O. You use a big coefficient in front of the waters to indicate how many. And when you look at these hydrates, the molar mass of them is all of those atoms added together. You would add up one cobalt, two chlorines, and then six water molecules, which may, is made up of 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. All that added together is the molar mass of the hydrate. So again, we'll practice more of those in class, and I'll see you next time.